out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Well, in case you were wondering, that was the parable of the sower. <coughs> really creatively named, I know. The thing with parables is that they're meant to be a little bit mysterious, uh, a little bit vague. Uh, it's a, literally a comparison, is what parable means, to be brought alongside so we can compare two things. Um, the thing is, with this parable, it's different from the others in that Jesus explains it. Goes into a pretty lengthy explanation. Uh, and so I thought that was my job. Um, but since Jesus did it, I thought maybe we could just sit for a few minutes. I don't see why not. Just eight or ten minutes, and Victor could play some in the back. Like a meditation. Like a meditation. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Uh, but we'll try something new. And, and uh, the thing with parables is that there's lots of different interpretations. That's the thing. Uh, they're meant to be vague, as I said before, so we can interpret them and apply them to our everyday lives. The way this one, or at least in my opinion, the way this one is most often applied is that we see it as kind of exclusionist or exclusive. Uh, we are the good soil, the ones who get it, and everyone else are the other three, and to some varying degree. That's often how this one is read. And you might even say that the explanation reads that way a little bit. And I think about that, and it's things like that that lead to situations like this. When I was in Chicago, I used to bring kids on mission trips, and they're not as extravagant as the mission trips here. We just used to go and do a day of service. And one of the places we used to go was called Pacific Garden Missions. It's a huge mission in downtown Chicago, not unlike the Day Resource Center or Night Shelter. It's kind of huge complexes. And it was a really amazing place, and the kids did some great work there. But there was a rule at the Pacific Garden Missions, and that was for the homeless and the people who had no money and no food, before you could eat dinner, you had to go to church. You had to walk in the building and go into the chapel and sit and listen to the preacher before he got established. Now, that has never, ever sat right with me. Never. You who don't have good soil, who deserve what you get. That's okay, we'll give you a sandwich. But you're going to listen to the sermon first. We're going to give you some Jesus, because obviously you don't have it. 
that's the exclusive claim that is often made. It's kind of arrogant, actually. And Christians can be arrogant. I'm going to say it. Don't hurt me. We can. We think often that we have the one right answer. And it's our job, then, to bring the good news to all these other places. We see ourselves often as the sower, as the one who is to go out and sow the seeds into all these places. But that's not actually what the scripture says. And that's why it makes me upset. We talked a little bit last week about the things that frustrate me with exclusiveness and outcasts. I'm going to do it a little bit again. It's this. The sower intentionally sows in the bad spots. As all the commentaries I read this week said, nothing a good farmer would ever do. Intentionally sows on the rocky soil, on the path, in the weeds. It's what Isaiah says. My word will achieve the purpose for which I sent it. It was not a mistake. Not a mistake. I think we live in a world where we want to think that it's our job to bring the good news, to be the sowers. <coughs> that's not what's said. In the places you least expect it, in the people where you least expect it. That's what Stephen Ministry kind of is all about. Finding God in the unexpected places, the places of loss and abandon, on the rocky soil. It's a mystery. It's an absolute mystery to how that works. That's just the nature of the Holy Spirit. That's the nature of seeds, actually. They grow under the ground where we can't see them. They blossom when we don't see them. They spread roots out and get into all your stuff where we can't see them. We like to see and perceive and understand. What Jesus says in the parable, the part that's cut out, we don't actually do that. That's why we have to interpret these things. That's why we have to struggle with them. Because rarely what you expect with God is what you get. I've uh, been telling intern stories the last few sermons. I'm going to tell another one. Uh, last week, I joked uh, as to why I was chosen uh, for this internship. Mainly because of the amount of furniture that had to be moved. <laughs> and, and I still kind of believe that that's the reason. <laughs> but, but the truth is, the truth is, the process is a little bit more com complicated than that. There's a little more that goes into it. As an intern, you get to interview with as many churches as you want. I can't remember. I think I did nine or ten. And the process is just about the same for the supervisor. You interview as many interns as sign up. And then the both of you create a list. You prioritize which church you'd like to go to, number one, two, and so on, all the way to the bottom. Uh, and then you just hope that you get matched up with the one that you picked, or at least near the top. I'm going to say something now. <laughs> that I'm going to count on you not throwing me out. <laughs> Two weeks ago, <laughs> Calvary was not my number one choice. <laughs> or my number two choice. <laughs> Or you might say anywhere on a list that would resemble the top. <laughs> you might have said it was at the bottom. <laughs> the reasons we won't go into. But I came down here, and my first day I was here, I had dinner with Pastor Phil. And he said, oh, Kyle, can you tell me where Calvary was on your list? <laughs> now there's a conundrum there for me. <laughs> Because I want to do well, and I can't lie to a pastor. <laughs> and I said to him, I'm going to be honest with you, Calvary was not my first choice. And without skipping a beat, he looked at me and he said, that's okay, you weren't my first choice either. <laughs> It seems to have worked out all right. <laughs> and I 
joked last week about the Holy Spirit folks, but it's stuff like that that, that makes me sure that the Holy Spirit is a real thing. It's experiences you have like that that make you sure. That even when you can't see it or you don't fully understand it, that make you sure. When you get to visit people in homes, and you have those incarnational moments where you see Jesus at work, the Holy Spirit at work, that's what makes you sure. When you have a family here for a baptism for a kid, you can't see the word in the water, but you trust that it's there. You see that it's there on the left and the family, and everyone gathered to celebrate it. It's there. And it's not an exclusive plan. It's a Catholic sermon with a little seed. Universal for everybody. Seeds in all the places. Not on accident, but on purpose. So that when we are, in fact, good soil, we do okay. But for the rest of the time, when we're not actually good soil, when we're the rocky soil, or the dirt path, or surrounded by buzzards or weeds, or whatever it is, that's the promise that the Isaiah says, that the Psalm says, we'll never, ever, ever be cut off. The Holy Spirit is a real thing. We don't understand it. And that's okay. Because whatever situation we're in, whatever kind of soil your heart is, there is just no getting away from that love that will never, ever, ever let you go.